Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! you kids doing we got a new sponsor of the show maybe he's not a sponsor but he paid me to review his book and so i will and it is written by uh, mike sechrist uh understanding the way forward capitalism's capitalism solution for income inequality that's the cover there it is an essay it's no more than oh yeah, 85 pages <clears throat> and so it's a relatively quick read especially if you have a basic or more than basic understanding of economics. I'll just read the back here a little bit and I'll go through my review of it. Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations meets Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Since the 2008 financial crisis, the economic economic community has been obsessed with the topic of income inequality. This sector has proposed many socialistic solutions to the problem, ranging from increasing progressive tax systems to flat out wealth redistribution. Despite expending lots of efforts towards offering solutions to income inequality, the academic economic community has expended very little effort towards educating the general populace on the basic operations uh, of and reasons for our current financial system. That's because most, I would even say economic professors don't even know that. And most of them don't, even if they do and they're consciously aware of it, they don't want to educate the people on economics. And find, I mean, why do we not keep, teach kids financial planning? Why don't we? Because if we did, they'd be like, uh, we better be a vote Republican here pretty soon or Libertarian. Understanding the way forward, on the contrary, makes every effort to truly educate the reader on topics such as money, taxes, fiscal policy, and finance before proposing a realistic, workable solution to the problem of unjust income inequality. Topics that financial experts generally consider too complex for the average person have been broken down to the basic principles each and every chapter by using simple examples. In addition, obscure financial terms have been replaced with more common wording. After and only after the reader has been exposed to basic modern financial operations does understanding the way forward begin to push the reader towards concerning a completely new yet completely reasonable solution <coughs> to income inequality that acknowledges the necessity for capitalistic incentive in creating an economically just society. Concisely written, understanding the way forward can be finished in an afternoon, which reads the reader plenty of time to reread any topics that may seem a little bit foreign after the first exposure. Although monetary and fiscal policy are unusual topics for the average person, after reading the book, anyone should be prepared to have an intelligent conversation on the topic of income inequality and furthermore be equipped to argue for the creation of a new monetary fiscal system, which encourages continued societal development by enabling unhampered income mobility. So. I read it and basically <clears throat> um, everything except for this being about income inequality. It may be aimed at that, but it's not really solely about income inequality or solving it. I, I would say it's, that's maybe a, a side note or a consequence of this book. But what this book basically is, is uh, a two-part book where the first, oh, come on, where's the first nine or ten chapters is part one. And uh, bubbles, where to go? Yeah, and then part two is the way forward. So this part of the book right here is uh, exactly what the back described. It is a very introductory, basic, and what I like a lot about it is he did not use... I was very impressed with how clearly, uh, clearly and concisely and simply this man wrote. Um, it would take most comments probably twice or three times the length of this book. So I know it is an essay. I'm not against essays. I don't think everything needs to be 300 pages. But this right here... Uh, in my humble opinion, would probably be uh, even better than, um, what was it, Hazlitt's One Economics and One Lesson. <clears throat> it explains, we can even go through the topics. Where are the chapters? Understanding income inequality, understanding the purpose of money, inflation, government spending, taxes, investment, or current monetary system, Federal Reserve's role in asset bubbles. He does an outstanding job in clearly describing what each and every one of those are for anybody who has not had any exposure to economics. Um, I would imagine uh, a somewhat savvy kid in middle school, 7th or 8th grade, could understand this. Uh, certainly it would do a lot better than your average uh, high school economics class and book. Just taking an afternoon to read this will teach you more than your entire semester in high school economics, college economics even. Um, and then the way forward, the part two, 
he goes through his own. Some are unique. Uh, I don't agree with them all, but they're definitely unique. And I try to sit and think about the integrity of them, what would happen. Sadly, I'd say about 70% of what he'd like to do is flawed and just wouldn't work. And I'll explain that here in a second with the major flaw of this book. Well, two major flaws of this book. Uh, but if you are looking to educate a young person on how the economy works, and this is actually quite apolitical. There's not a lot of conservative libertarianism in here. There's no socialism or leftism. It's like, hey, this is how our economy works. This is how it's always worked. Matter of fact, this is how all economies work, whether you want to get with the program or not. Um, so I think it would make a very good introductory read for uh, middle school and up, certainly high school. Uh, and if you had a kid graduating from high school, this might be an okay book. Part two is more economic theory, uh, I think a bit too fanciful, a bit too pie in the sky. It talks about ways for production, ways to create, <coughs> ways to tax, ways to spend, <coughs> ways to repay, way to spend, way to tax, way to invest. Um, and like I said, I have some functional problems with his solutions because they either wouldn't work or they're already agents in modern day free market economies that would do it for you already and probably better than his ideas. Plus it's highly uh, corruptible. You could totally work around. You got, I'd be a trillionaire. <laughs> I'd just steal all the money. Uh, but it, it, there's some interesting thoughts in there. Uh, the two major problems with this book uh, one, nobody gives a damn about economics. Nobody cares. This is why I'd say maybe you start this in the eighth grade when your kid wants to start learning about economics or they're in high school and being forced to. But <clears throat> for the most part, nobody wants to learn about economics. And certainly, you know, your solutions, the way to create. People don't want to create. They want free shit. They want Steve Jobs to create and then have Bernie Sanders go and steal other people's money so they can get a free iPhone. That's what most Americans want today, and what an increasing percentage of Americans will want tomorrow. Uh, and, that's, and that's my problem with, with the, the Namon problem with this book, is he, he actually thinks people in this country want to do good, and they want to understand taxes, they want to understand government. They don't give a shit. All they want is they want their free shit, and they don't care how they get it. This is boring. This is stupid. Oh, I don't care. What does that mean? Who gives a shit about the Federal, federal uh, Fractional Reserve Banking System? We go, who cares? Um, and that's that. It's so it's kind of tragic. It's a, it's a damn good essay. This is very good. Um, it is great uh, for learning basic economics, even a little bit of a brush up. Uh, and he just chooses the words very precisely and very correctly. <clears throat> but people don't want capitalism solution for. People don't want to go for. They think the solution is other people's money. And that's that's you know maybe I would have written something like this. Maybe not as well though. Maybe I would have written something like this back when I was in my late 20s, perhaps even early 30s, but not mid-30s, because by that time it was enjoy the decline time. Uh, this is going to fall on deaf ears. You might as well write a book, How to Eat Vegetables, Diet Right, and Work Out Regularly. No one wants to read that. I, I'm trying to think. Econ let's do this. Economics in one lesson. Let's look up how well that sells against any one of Oprah's lying to your Facebooks. Uh, was it Larry Hazlitt who wrote this? Henry Hazlitt. <clears throat> well, there's basic economics, Thomas Sowell. Um, 1186 reviews. Let's just type in Oprah. Oprah, the path made clear. <laughs> uh, wait, did Oprah just come out with a book today? What? Oprah, what is it? Where's a book by Oprah? Oh, for God's sake, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway. Uh, that's that's the problem. It, no one wants to read this. No one wants to eat vegetables. No one wants to diet. No one wants to do what's right. No one wants to work hard. They want free shit. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that's why this book is not going to sell. It's not going to sell that much. 
I, I mean, I hope it does. I think for people within my listening audience, if you want a real quick, succinct view of how economies work on a micro level, this is a, a great little essay. It won't take that long to read, obviously. Um, but unfortunately, it, it's not, that's going to be a tough sell, man. It's going to be a real tough sell. So. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. All that other stuff. I'll talk to you guys later. Toodles.